Greetings. Uh, let us talk about esophageal stricture. So this is a patient that has come in for endoscopy and uh, she has been having acid reflux for a few years and she has been maintaining by taking antacids over the counter. But for the last uh, few months, she has noticed difficulty eating a sandwich or an apple. It tends to get stuck in the middle of the chest and she has to chase it with water. So that is a typical story for esophageal stricture. Uh, esophageal stricture is, as you can see on the screen, narrowing of the esophagus. And the most common cause for esophageal stricture is acid reflux. And when the stomach acid comes into the esophagus, it causes damage to the esophagus. And depending upon the amount of acid exposure, length of exposure, and the strength of the esophagus lining to prevent damage, one could see inflammation that may be obvious to the eye or just visible under the microscope when you take a biopsy. Inflammation of the esophagus is known as esophagitis. When inflammation becomes severe, it can break the lining of the esophagus and uh, break in the lining is known as erosion and if there is a deeper break that is an ulcer. As the inflammation goes, goes on, uh, the area tries to heal and the healing process causes uh, scarring and the scarring causes narrowing of the esophagus which is known as stricture. And finally, as the acid reflux goes on for a long time, in some patients, the squamous lining of the esophagus changes into columnar lining along with intestinal cells. And that is known as Barrett's esophagus. And we know that the Barrett's esophagus can go on to develop cancer. So let us see uh, how these things uh, show up. So when you do endoscopy uh, in somebody who has had acid reflux for a long time, majority of the time the esophagus looks normal. A nice pink uh, squamous lining of the esophagus and a beefy red lining of the stomach and the squamous junction. Everything looks normal in majority of the patients with acid reflux. When the lining starts getting damaged and results in erosive esophagitis, this is how it looks. Erosions, breaks in the lining of the esophagus. And as the damage continues and causes a narrowing, a scarring and narrowing, and results in a stricture uh, which is not cancerous that is otherwise known as benign stricture. This is how it looks. We also know that with long-term damage to the esophagus and a change in the lining to Barrett's esophagus, cancer can develop that is esophageal adenocarcinoma and that cancer causing narrowing is known as malignant stricture. Benign stricture that is not cancerous, malignant stricture that is cancerous. So in addition to acid reflux causing esophageal narrowing, there are other causes for benign stricture. So if somebody drinks acid, 
uh, accidentally or for suicide or drinks an alkali, that is a drain cleaner, either accidentally or for suicide, that corrosive material can damage the esophagus and lead to corrosive stricture. We also know that patients who undergo radiation, the radiation to the chest could damage the esophagus and lead to radiation stricture. So these are all benign strictures. So let us uh, go back and try to understand this whole concept from a different angle. So acid reflux, lining looks normal. Uh, there is uh, no obvious damage to the mucosa, but as it goes, uh, as the damage goes deeper, it results in erosive esophagitis, and it goes deeper and scarring, it results in a benign esophageal stricture. So let us go back to the patient. Uh, so here is an example of, uh, of a patient who has been having acid reflux for a long time and uh, recently started noticing difficulty swallowing, uh, swallowing uh, of a piece of apple or a piece of meat and uh, not been taking any medication. So in that case, you see uh, not only narrowing of the esophagus, but some inflammation and ulceration. So there is a benign structure with er erosive esophagitis. On the other hand, when you treat this patient with uh, medications to control acid, uh, for example, omeprazole or Prilosec, uh, then the inflammation settles down and heals, leaving the stricture. So this is what a benign stricture looks like, you know, nice, clean, uh, smooth narrowing. But this is how a cancerous or a malignant stricture looks like. As you can see, uh, compared to the benign stricture, that is nice, clean, smooth, dry. Malignant stricture has a lot of nodules, ulceration, bleeds easily. So, so one thing is to keep in mind, whenever there is a stricture, you want to ask yourself, is this benign or cancerous? Even though you think it is benign, it is important to take biopsies and confirm that it is benign. In some who have had stricture for a long time and the area is dry and you think about uh, uh, helping the patient uh, swallow a little bit better, you need to dilate the stricture. And there are different instruments that we could use to dilate the stricture. Uh, one is a bougie dilator where you pass it over a wire through the stricture and gently uh, stretch it. Uh, as the bougie goes up and down on the esophagus. Another instrument is a balloon dilator. Uh, you pass the balloon through the stricture and use the syringe pump to push in water to open up uh, the balloon. And as the balloon opens up, the stricture gets widened. So there are different ways of uh, taking care of this uh, patient. And we'll talk a lot more detail, in a lot more detail about uh, how to take care of it in future sessions. Thank you.